cells, those microscopic structures that hold life and everything living is made up of. Have you ever wondered how cells communicate with each other? Today, we're going to discuss one specific kind of cell signaling, synaptic signaling, as well as how this kind of signaling has shaped our lives as humans. Let's get to it. We all know the nervous system. It's comprised of over 100 billion neurons throughout your body, all communicating with each other. But how do these neurons communicate? This would be synaptic signaling. People tend to think that neurons are the big deal of the nervous system, and don't get me wrong, they are a big deal, but they are useless without the tiny communication links between them. Synapses. A neuron by itself is next to useless without a friend to talk to, and they definitely like to talk. Each friend or neuron in your body has 1,000 to 10,000 synapses. Oh. So there's definitely a lot of communication going on. So, how do these synapses help in relaying the message? Let's say one neuron gets some awesome news. For example, Kanye is across the street at Publix. Yo, yo. Oh my god. Or in the neurons world, something we would consider an emotion or a sense. For this example, let's go with a sudden surge of happiness, seeing as everyone loves to be happy. The neuron with the message, called the presynaptic neuron, would have the message travel down to what looks like the tail of a neuron, called the presynaptic terminal. In one of these presynaptic terminals, as each neuron has many, there are a bunch of little synaptic vesicles filled with thousands of molecules of a specific neurotransmitter. In our example, dopamine, which makes you feel happy and relaxed. Close by, there is another neuron called the postsynaptic neuron, which accepts the neurotransmitters in its receptor region, which is filled with receptors primed and ready to accept the specific neurotransmitter. Now here's the catch. These two neurons are millions of a centimeter apart, but they never even touch. They are separated by a gap called the synaptic cleft. So how does the signal pass from one neuron to the other when they don't touch? When a neuron gets a signal, the action potential of that signal opens the calcium ion channels in the presynaptic terminal. This allows positively charged calcium ions to enter the terminal, creating a whole ton of positively charged tension in there. This influx of positivity pushes the synaptic vesicles out of the presynaptic terminal and into the synaptic cleft. The vesicles fuse with the cell membrane of the neuron and release those thousands of neurotransmitters. So now there's a bunch of chemicals floating around in the synaptic cleft. The postsynaptic terminal is ready for them though. They are primed with receptor proteins perfectly shaped to accept the molecules being transmitted. Once this neurotransmitter binds with the receptor, it opens the ion channels in the postsynaptic neuron, and now it can be either excited and want to pass the message, or inhibited and not want to hit send. Side note! You may be wondering, what's the point of having a gap between the neurons? Doesn't it just make things more complicated? Well, there's a reason for it. Having the gap there allows for the message to be changed, amplified or inhibited or anything else in between. This is important so our feelings and senses are better controlled, just like you don't want to scream in excitement the whole time you see Kanye at Publix. So, after binding with the receptor protein, the neurotransmitters return into the synaptic cleft. Some can be recycled back into the presynaptic terminal in a process called reuptake, and some just diffuse into the surrounding solution. This part is important to medical sciences today and is taken advantage of by many drugs that we use today, legal and illegal. Many drugs that change mood exploit creation, transmission, and the reuptake process of neurons to achieve their desired effects. Some drugs excite the creation of chemicals like dopamine to make you feel better. Some block the neurotransmitters from being recycled, allowing them to just float around and make connections all over the synaptic cleft. Some even steal the identity of the naturally occurring chemicals in your body, making you think you're getting a rush of a natural chemical when you're actually getting anything but. In your normal state as the average human, you can regulate your mood by controlling how much of a chemical is released and how often. But many mood-altering drugs take your own natural process and turn it into a man-made one, which can affect your ability to produce your own chemicals. Of course, when I say drugs, people think, Oh goodness, bad, illegal drugs, no! But this is also a process taken advantage of by drugs such as antidepressants and other mood stabilizers. Not everyone has the perfect chemical balance, and some need a little extra help to feel normal. Congratulations, you just spent an entire podcast thinking about how your brain is thinking. Feel smart yet?